In today's episode, I get soaked in Paris, chew the fat about last night's game and the impending final, find a great boozer to watch New Zealand versus South Africa and enjoy a final stuffed full of drama. My name's Tim Tunnicliffe, host of the Amateur Rugby Podcast, and I'm here in France to show you the entirety of the Rugby World Cup. I'll be travelling the country, hitting the fan zones, showing you the in-stadium experience and getting the lowdown from all the talking points from what is sure to be an epic World Cup. In the last episode, I considered why there is a third, fourth playoff. No one cares! I got the views of a man in a skirt. I think we should take the advantage to play exciting, amazing running rugby. I watched an England player have some serious highs and lows and I revealed the two reasons why I won't be sorry to leave France. And people in the stadium booed him. Move or get shot or get bitten by a dog. What world are we living in? 51 days, 47 games, the width and the length of France and it all leads here to Paris for the Rugby World Cup final. And it is a grey, miserable day. Look at that. Rain is coming down now and it's getting heavier by the minute. At the moment, it's still that kind of rain that you don't really notice it when you're playing. And sort of then you realise that it's been raining the entire time, but it's that kind of light, fine rain, which won't make much of a difference to the game, I don't think. But there have been some very, very heavy showers over the last week. And if we get some of those, oh look, there's the Arthur Tower there. If we get some of those, then it could be a very messy game tonight. No ticket for me today, so it's off to find a decent boozer with some big screens and a lively crowd to witness the culmination of this Rugby World Cup. It's been an outstanding tournament full of amazing games. The stadiums have been incredible. The fans have been amazing. Some of the minnows have really showed up and we've fallen in love with countries like Portugal and Chile, Uruguay, but it's left to the two biggest of them all this evening to see who's going to become the first four-time world champion. I'm picking New Zealand. Wonderful couple of hours there at Kitty O'Shea's. Everybody feeling a little bit delicate, as usual on these things. First night excitement. Everybody went pretty hard last night. <laughs> but very excited about the game still to come. An hour till kickoff, and opinions were mixed about the way it's going to go. We're 50 50 in our group, all black Springboks. General consensus is that if the Springboks are going to win, it's going to be a tight game or a very close scoreline. But if the Kiwis are going to win, it could just stretch away or we'll get a good lead and hold on. Kitty O'Shea's was great, lovely bar, but not great watching, I don't think. I didn't feel like it would be anyway, so I'm trying to find a better option. Let's see what we can get. And I found Sullivan's, a place that had been recommended to me several times. I headed in to find plenty of screens and excited crowd. <laughs> Seven minutes in, major incident though, with Shannon Frizzell rolling on Bongi on Banambi's knee, causing the South African hooker to go off injured. That's all on a yellow card review. It could turn into a red, but I doubt it. On Banambi's out of the game, leaving South Africa very short in the hooking department. I expect New Zealand to kick the ball off the pitch a lot more now. New Zealand incessantly trying to run the ball, use their hands. They've been found wanting so far this game. South Africa have had a huge amount of pressure. But the Kiwis did get some territory, some decent hands for a bit of time. 3-6 now with South Africa with a kick to come. It's not a classic, but there is no shortage of incident here. Sam Kane's been sent off in the first half. 12-6 at the half. 
Peter Steph de Toy. What a half of rugby from that man. The sending off is obviously a factor. I'm not sure how big New Zealand are going to continue to play. I'm going to stick with my prediction. New Zealand to come back and win. Mark Talea looks very dangerous. However, some other players are looking very nervous. People like Will Jordan. But it's one of those tense games that only finals can produce. New Zealand to win just. By the way, I'm doing this from inside the bar because you literally cannot get out. It is rammed so tight. I could barely get myself a drink, to be honest. Uh, so, so I got two. Oh my god, drama. Khaleesi's just also gone off for a yellow card. High shot, on report, could easily turn into a red. Imagine that, both open sides, both captains sent off in a World Cup final. Three minutes ago, Colby off with a yellow card. 11, 12, New Zealand, South Africa. New Zealand are deep in their own territory. They can't get out at the moment. They've had chances. They miss a long range penalty. This is brutal. There it is, there we have it. The Moulin Rouge continues to spin. The Rugby World Cup's over. Congratulations, South Africa. Narrow victors in every single knockout game by one point in the quarterfinal, the semi-final and the final. Amazing achievement. Feel sad for New Zealand, especially for San Kane. I've got to say, there'll be some Kiwis that will be upset with their performances tonight. They didn't perform the way they can. They tried, but there was a lot of errors by some key players. They got the try, missed the conversion, missed the long range penalty afterwards and lose by a point. They're going to have big regrets, there's no doubt. And a word for player of the match, Peter Steph Dutoy. So clearly the man of the match, almost embarrassing. Massive hat tip to the man, Sia Khaleesi. Along with Richie McCaw now, lifting the World Cup two times as a captain. Absolutely outstanding achievement. And in a world when rugby values seem to be slipping away, if everybody could just be a bit more like Sia Khaleesi, the world would be a better place. But this has been an amazing tournament. It's been an incredible journey and for me this World Cup is now over and I'm looking forward to sleeping probably for a month at least. Thanks for watching, peace. If you've enjoyed this video I'd appreciate a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for a ton more great content from the Amateur Rugby Podcast.